In the 1950s, the goal was to build a fighter which could take off and land vertically. One of the first was the Convair XFY-1, known as the Pogo. Nobody wanted to fly it. There were no volunteers. But the more I learned about the airplane, the more I thought it was a, a successful concept. It could be worked out. In uh, retrospect, uh, I guess it was quite dangerous. But it was a developmental power plant. It was a developmental airplane, a developmental concept, and pretty hard to tie all those together without having a lot of risk. We're going to depart from the conventional procedure. Excuse me, I have to go. The cockpit is quite a bit up off the ground, and to get into it, I had to have special ladders to get in and out and to get hooked up. It had a single jet engine driving two propellers in opposite directions to stop the engine from turning the aircraft instead. But they came for the first flight. That was a pretty tense moment because there were a lot of people, around 3,000 people from Washington and around, and uh, we really had an untried airplane at that point as far as transitional flight is concerned. Well, I guess you just push to go, so to speak. Uh, it just came up like you were on skis, rising up out of water. Just beautiful transition. Everything went as planned. Skeets Coleman climbed to 4,000 feet. In level flight, the Pogo flew more or less like a conventional aircraft. Of course, then the problem was getting back. That was a lot of worry, mainly because the airplane was so fast and I couldn't slow it down. I just left my chase plane behind. And we estimated that flight idle, I was doing 300 knots. When I was at 100 knots, I was committed. Pulled it up, pulled back the power, and said, here we go. Just as I get to the vertical, I add power and hope I'm not still soaring. At that point, I have to look over my shoulder and quit looking at the flight instruments. From now on, I'm doing nothing but looking over my shoulder at the ground below. And the airplane was critical in vertical rate of descent. At about 20 feet per second, it would tumble. And when I get to the spot that I want to land on, I just hover there and then bring it down and bring the throttle fully back, which puts the prop in a beta position and gives you some negative lift and makes sure you stay solidly on the ground. The first flight over, Skeets had only one emotion. Relief. <laughs> a lot of relief because I was very tired after the first one. I'd had to back down from about 700 feet. And uh, if it hadn't been some helicopters around there on the first flight helping me back down, I would never have made it. The Pogo was never adapted as a fighter, but America persisted with the concept of an aircraft which could make the transition from vertical to horizontal flight and back on one set of engines. The Ryan X-13 was jet powered. Once again, it required great skill and concentration on the part of the pilot, particularly on landing, which was made against a specially prepared tower. 